We're joined today by Nick DeBlock, CEO of Kinetico Energy. Nick, thanks for your time. Thank you, David. It's great to be back in Perth. Good to be chatting. A significant tenement package in South Africa. Why is this tenement package so strategic? Well, it's a, it's a combination of our geographical size and exactly where we are. Um, understand we have uh, just over 6,000 square kilometres under, under current rights and reapplication areas. Uh, but we, we positioned right in the middle of the, the heartland of the infrastructure. In fact, if you, if you actually wanted to put a gas deposit in South Africa, that's exactly where you'd put it, right there in the middle of, of uh, coal mines, power stations, road and rail works, uh, uh, heavy, uh, heavy voltage grid with capacity, it's important. Um, and, the, and the pipeline structure uh, runs through all three of our existing tenements under rights. It's a, it's a really great place to have gas. And what's the status of the project? as you move it towards development? Yeah, that's a good question. We've been, we are rank explorers still. Um, we're under exploration rights. We are moving our most advanced block, which is ER271 in the middle between uh, north of Amersfoort and south of Folkestrist. We're busy converting that into a production right as we speak. Uh, we're building the EIA for the, that will inform the production right. And uh, we hope to have that in our hands by approximately the middle of next year, if we're lucky, maybe early Q3. Um, and that will trigger our move into a production era. Um, by that stage, I should have all my ducks in a row in order to release something like 10 rigs into the field to do nothing but produce a well a month each uh, as we advance towards uh, satisfying the intentions of a new relationship that we have with the IDC to, to, to part fund this, uh, this venture. Can you talk more about that relationship and why it's so important? Well, it gives us the wherewithal, of course. It, it, apart from being a vote of confidence in our project from the government, this is after all a government investment body, um, they give us the wherewithal to develop a stage one that will produce about 50 megawatt equivalent, or if you like, 60,000 tonne per annum LNG if we choose to go that route. Um, on the strength of that, that multiplies again by 10 times. We have the framework to do that. Um, so leading up to about 600,000 tonnes per annum LNG production in the southern part of Block 271, which is why that's the first block that we're approaching for uh, production, right? And then the ability is there to times that up by three times again. So we're talking about long-term, maybe two-decade production uh, of about 1.5 gigawatt equivalent, um, and that should consume about two TCF of gas. For those who don't know the South African energy situation, Talk to us about how is South Africa going from a demand supply point of view when it comes to energy? South Africa is in dire straits at the moment. Uh, the, we cannot produce enough energy for our demand. Um, Standard Bank has calculated we're short of about 13 gigawatts. It's a huge amount of energy paucity that we have at the moment. We have planned rolling blackouts we call load shedding. Uh, multiple hours, multiple times a day, it's very frustrating. Um, uh, industries, uh, certainly mines, etc., uh, are forced to burn a lot of diesel, which is crazy. Um, you know, so that our, our nice, clean burning gas, non pollutive gas, you know, stands uh, at the cusp of being a very much cleaner and greener solution to the energy needs of the country. Is there a supply crunch coming? Yes, there is. I don't think we're going to get away without having to import some LNG, uh, David. The, the signs are all there, you know, given what we can do to be a part solution, plus uh, our collaborators in the onshore and offshore gas industry of South Africa, it almost doesn't matter how many slices of pie we can put into the tray of need, we're not going to be able to fill it. Um, the big uh, cliff currently that we're facing is that Cecil has provided about 100% of our gas in South Africa for the last two decades or thereabouts, coming out of onshore fields, uh, the Pandi Tamani fields in Mozambique, and uh, bless them, they've performed very well, but you know, it comes a time in the life of a gas field that they, they do turn over and deplete. So, you know, they're off takers that they feed down this lily line to about two dozen or so thermal industries um, are facing an existential problem. And of course, the, you know, we are talking to a lot of them. They, they, they're calling us to see if we can play a role in, in keeping them in business, literally going forward. Uh, fortunately, that lily line comes through all three of our current areas under rights. It's, uh, it's a godsend. What does the path look like? What should investors be focused on over the next six to 12 months from Kinetico? I think it's an excellent time for um, investors to climb in right now. We are very undervalued and to support that opinion, that view, uh, I invite anybody to go to our website, uh, kinetico.com.au 
and download copies of the valuation reports. Um, we have one from K1 Capital that was done some time ago, evaluating us at between 30 odd cents and 90 odd cents. Uh, MST Access did uh, have done a few deep dives and their most recent report came out only about a week ago, uh, valuating us at 41 cents. We're trading at about 12 as we speak. It's a very, very good time to climb it. You recently released the Sproul Report, which looked at the reserves and resources across the portfolio. What did it tell you and why is it so important? Well, we were delighted with these results. I must admit, I've been pushing for some time to get a, a recertification of our resources. Um, the previous one we had was focused essentially on the coal contents of our, of, of our rights areas, um, whereas we're only cutting about 3 or 4% of coal in our stratigraphical uh, results from the boreholes. So, um, Sproul out of Denver, Colorado recently did a, a recertification of our area um, looking at the sandstone driven uh, gas productivity and they have given us a 2C which is the, the, the mid-range contingent report um, certification of 6 TCF. The rules have changed, PRMS rules have changed as you may know and they're only allowed to report contingent where we put holes in the ground now. So, um, outside of that, within our tenement areas, they've called it prospective resource, and there's almost another six there. There's another 5.8 hanging out. In fact, the six is already obsolete, uh, David, because I've put three holes in the ground since they cut off the, the calculation for the certification, so that's moving upwards as we speak. Um, the reason it's so significant is that if you consider, you know, South African context, um, Moss gas produced for two decades, 20 years profitably from onshore fields to an offshore onshore refinery, beg your pardon, um, on one single TCF. Uh, Sassel had planned a multi-decade production of all the gas we have in South Africa on just 2.5. So we're multiples of both of those combined. Um, so the, 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 the substance is, is undeniable and can't be ignored. Investors love news flow a clear need and a strategic position. Exciting times ahead for Kinetico and its shareholders. Thanks for your time. Thank you, David.